back to Art with Anna. Today we will be learning about artist and minimalist. Um, and his name is Frank Stella. So that's who we'll be talking about today. Um, he was born in the 1930s. He is from Massachusetts, um, born to two parents of Italian descent, and his father did have some experience in house painting, um, although he became a doctor, but he taught Frank a little bit about house painting because they would paint their own houses. Um, so that was some of the history of Frank's paint experience, and then also his mother was very interested in art um, and was an artist as well. So that is a brief history about him. He is still alive and in his 80s, and we are gonna dive into some of his artworks and recreate one of them ourselves. First, let's get the supplies we'll need, and we'll get started. You will need two colors of construction paper, a marker, scissors, tape, and a straight edge. I'll be using the edge of this book, but a ruler would probably work better. All right, so let's talk about um, some of Frank's works. Now, he was considered the father of modernism, and by that I mean minimalism. He was considered the father of minimalism, and um, that is because a lot of his artworks are made up of um, simply just lines. interrupted by my cat eating. Anyway, um, a lot of his artwork is made up of um, simply lines and um, he was always very attracted to very geometric and flat artwork, so different than the modern expressionism that was popular at the time, which was a lot of gestural brush strokes um, and movement that way. He kind of sought to also make your eye move around the canvas, um, but kind of in like a track. He said that um, growing up, because he would paint houses, um, oftentimes you'd take a paintbrush and go across and then back across, or a roller across and back across, and he wanted your eye to kind of do that motion across his, his artwork. Um, so it was a little less expressive, but still um, had a lot of, of movement. But it was super minimal, um, oftentimes just geometry, few colors, um, quite a few of his paintings were just black, and the, the pinstripe around the black um, kind of pathways is just where there's no paint. So he's really just using black paint to make those pathways. Um, and that's probably one of the things he's the most known for is that type of line work in his paintings. So um, that's something we'll be thinking about today is making those lines. That's why a straight edge is gonna be pretty necessary. Um, but also in his later work, he kind of moved into more maximalism as people call it, where he used a lot of different things and a lot of different shapes. So we'll talk about that as we move forward a little bit. But first, let's get started with our piece of artwork. All right, I'm sorry about the shadows. Hopefully you guys can see okay. So I am taking this piece of paper and folding it in half. And I'm just gonna cut this piece of paper directly in half. So we have two of these um, kind of elongated rectangle shapes and I am going to cut mine actually just down to the size of the straight edge that I have. So the book that I'm using as my straight edge um, goes a little bit longer than my piece of paper. So I am also going to cut off um, the extra on the end of both of these. All right, so I have two rectangles of this pink paper. It's the same length as my straight edge so I can confidently make lines um, and not worry 
about them kind of going askew. I'll put this paper on here. Maybe that will help a little what you guys can see. All right, so I'm just gonna make lines. I'm gonna put my straight edge down, take my marker, make a line, move my straight edge a bit, make a line, and again, make a line, make a line, and make a line. So if you guys can see, Got lines going down my paper, and I'm gonna do the same with my other sheet. So we're gonna pause here with our two pieces of striped paper. All right, someone who um, Frank Stell was extremely inspired by was Jackson Pollock. And when you think about him, you don't really think about him being a minimalist. Um, and that's because he really wasn't. Um, he was expressionist. But the thing that Frank liked most about, well, one of the things he liked about Jackson Pollock was kind of his larger than life canvases. So previous to that, for a long time, kind of the canvas that you could put on the easel to paint, that kind of size, was really, really popular. And Jackson Pollock was painting big canvases. He was throwing them on the ground and painting them on the ground. So he was kind of um, changing the way people thought about canvases. Well, Frank Stella takes that one step further. A lot of his canvases are not rectangular. Um, we are gonna look at this L-shaped copper painting right here. This is gonna be kind of our inspiration for the first part of our artwork today. But he also did two of these racetrack inspired shapes. And then he also just started playing around with different abstract um, shapes. And then also he played around with this um, idea of squares having this half circle shape inside of them. And he did that by using a protractor, um, which is kind of cool. So he has taken the typical rectangular shaped canvas and he's decided that's very limiting and people can think about a canvas in a different way by changing the shape. So we are going to take our two pieces and we are going to tape or glue, whichever you think works better, them into an L shape either like this or I'm going to use tape to make it like this. So um, let's tape these together. All right, so I've rolled a piece of tape and I'm putting it kind of as close to the edge as I can get it here. And then I'm gonna make another one for it here. overlap slightly like this. Tape that down. And then I'm going to reinforce this edge with another just flat piece of tape back here. All right, a little bit pretty sturdy. Got tape here and then tape underneath here in some rolls. All right, so we have an L-shaped canvas right now. And again, that's what he's kind of known for is this sort of um, minimal lines, but also um, strangely shaped canvases. All right, so this is the shape that I have with the stripes on it. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk with you guys about is um, Frank Stella's kind of ideas about 
when a painting goes from being a painting to a sculpture. Like, um, if a painting has changed its shape like this, does this make it a sculpture? Um, or does, does that take more? So he began to kind of try out different ways of lifting the canvas, the canvas and making different shapes. Um, so we are going to do that today by folding our paper, but I did want to show you some examples. So you can see here that there's like these peaks inside the canvas. It's not perfectly flat. It is a different shape. Um, and he was just playing around with if it's hanging on the wall, does that make it still just a painting? Or now that I've added more three-dimensional effect, is it now a sculpture? That kind of blurred line in between. Um, and as he got older, he started adding more things to his painting. So he went from being the father of minimalism to being kind of a maximalist, which is where you have a lot of things going on in your paintings. Um, and he really started pushing to more sculpture. Um, I think he still considers himself just a painter, so... But more and more three-dimensional paintings, I guess I should say. Um, so his very later works were inspired by photos of um, smoke rings taken. And so he wants this like pluming three-dimensional shapes to come out from his, from his painting. So we first are going to make some folds in our um, canvas and put a few three-dimensional aspects in. All right, so we have our canvas here. Should be an L shape of some sort. Got our lines on it. Now we're gonna make some folds. So. The first thing I'm gonna do is find a spot and just fold my paper back. I'm just gonna really make that line, push it down, really make that fold sturdy. I'm then gonna just fold it back a little bit. So we should have Kind of this triangle that can pop up. However, we need it to stand back down. So we have a fold, an inch with a fold going the opposite way, and we'll do about another inch or two with the fold going back. Kind of like an accordion. And what that leaves us with is this three-dimensional shape here. All right, so I think this lighting is a little bit better, but um, what we've done here is made a fold flat, then we folded our sheet of paper back a little bit and then back in. So we've made an accordion shape. Um, that way we have this three-dimensional spot that comes out here. And we are gonna do the same with this side. I'm gonna make a fold back, fold back this way, and a fold back it again so we have an accordion shape all right i think i fixed the lighting situation i'm not trying to complain because it's been so sunny in february in michigan so i'm not going to complain about the sunlight but that lighting was not good all right so we have as you can see here this canvas that's l shape and it also has two um three-dimensional points to it so we're kind of mimicking kind of the mid-range artwork that um, Frank Stella made. We're kind of evolving with him over the years. He started making art really in the 50s, um, so he's been making it for many years now. Um, and his artwork has changed over time, which makes sense. He's been making art for a long time. So we're kind of changing with him. So we went from just doing lines on rectangular canvases, which is what we started with, just lines on our rectangles. And then he changed the shape of his canvases, so we had our L shape. Then he started adding some three-dimensional aspects, so we've done that here. Now the last step of um, where Frank Costello's art is right now is that it's quite three-dimensional. Um, there's much more dimension to it. He's really ventured into sculpture. and. Um, that is made by um, 
just different materials that he uses, but he's inspired by many things. Um, he's been inspired by like columns and the idea of cones. Um, and then he's also, like I mentioned before, inspired by kind of how smoke rises. Um, so those are the things we're gonna think about while grabbing our second piece of construction paper. So I've got my sheet of construction paper. Something I'm gonna do is just cut out abstract shapes. Um, a cone is something that he has been very interested in. So um, I might make a kind of triangular shape with a rounded edge to look like a cone. And then I'm also just gonna make some kind of squiggly lines to kind of represent smoke. So let's get to that and then meet up after. around our canvas however you'd like. Um, I am going to try to connect my um, two high points by one of my sheets of paper just to really make it three-dimensional. And then another kind of trick to making it something three-dimensional um, is to make a little accordion. Fold one way and then the other way and then the other way. Back and forth till it kind of makes a little spring. Kind of like that and you can glue or tape that underneath anything that you'd like and tape the other end and that will give it some uh, dimension make it sit up a little higher so i'm going to play around with using some little accordions and trying to connect my two high points with this sheet of paper to really make um, some different dimension in my artwork So obviously Frank Stella um, was inspired by different artists. We talked about um, him being inspired to kind of manipulate the shape and size of the canvas by Jackson Pollock. Um, he was also inspired by Piet Mondrian um, with his simple shapes and grids. Um, and he was just inspired by a lot of different artists. And I think that's really cool. I think that's how most artists are. Um, they get inspired by each other and take different ideas and push it even further. And um, I think the way that Frank Stella has really pushed the limits with making things really three-dimensional and deep and different shapes um, really does blur the lines between painting and sculpture in a way that hasn't been done before. So I was excited to share about him with you today. Um, so this is how my final product looks. So I've got my squiggly line that's connecting over here and down here, uh, kind of the lifts, and then this guy is kind of three-dimensional up here. Um, and yeah, this is how it finally turned out. So I'd love to see what your guys' looks like. Um, I hope you guys have just fun with this. It's fun to just play around and make something that's kind of a little wild and not perfect. Um, so have fun learning and talking a little bit about Frank Stella, and I will meet up with you guys again next week. Have a good day, a good week, and I'll see you later. Bye.